Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made Gizmo here from the Gremlin movies. I consider those movies to be holiday movies because they take place during Christmas time. We always watch them during Christmas time, but if you don't, I totally respect that. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for new videos every week and that being said, let's get right into it. I'm starting out with a 12 inch cake board and you can see I have made a hole. This is the same size as the wooden dowel that I'm going to be using. I'm adding some hot glue and then grabbing my dowel and holding that in place until it can stand up on its own. My cake is going to be pretty small. If your cake is larger, then you can use a larger dowel. I have this little 3 inch cake card that I put a hole in as well and added some hot glue to the bottom and I'm going to be threading that on my dowel and pressing it down and this is just going to add a little extra stability and keep things from wiggling around. Once everything was dry and secure, I'm going to start adding my cake. For the body, I'm starting out with two 6 inch cakes that I leveled and cut in half and I'm going to be placing that through the dowel one layer at a time, just trying to get it as centered as possible and then filling that with some Swiss meringue buttercream using my small offset spatula. Once my four layers were stacked up, I added a little bit of buttercream to the top and then I have a four inch cake that I leveled and cut in half and I'm only gonna be using one layer of that and I'm gonna try and get it as centered as possible. Next, it was time to carve. So with my serrated knife, I'm gonna start going around the sides. I don't want there to be a gap between the four inch and the six inch cakes. So I'm going for kind of a teardrop shape but leaving a little bit more in the front for his tummy. You can see that I've set the cake a little bit back on the board and I did that so there was going to be room for his legs in the front. So this was the shape that I ended up with. You can see that I've gotten rid of most of that outer caramelization. And then to give the bottom a little more shape, I'm grabbing my knife and cutting in at an angle. And then I went over the whole thing just to round it out. Once I had the shape I wanted, I needed to do a crumb coat. I'm using ganache for this because ganache is going to set a little bit harder than buttercream and it makes it a little bit easier when you're doing these 3D type cakes. Since my cake was really moist, I'm using a runnier ganache so I just heated this up a little bit. You can see I'm making a big mess, but I'm just going all the way around my cake and making sure all of those crumbs are locked in place. Once the whole thing was covered, I popped that in the fridge for about 25 minutes to chill and then when I could touch the ganache and none of it came off on my finger, I was ready for the next step. Since the head is going to be heavy, I need to add some support so it doesn't mush down into the body. I have these wooden dowels. I'm just placing one right beside that center dowel and then I'm marking off where it's flush with the cake and I'm cutting four dowels to be the same length. I added a little smear of ganache just to act as glue and then I have another 3 inch cake board with the hole in it and I'm threading that down. Next for the arms, since they're a little bit on the larger side, I'm using a cake pot mixture. You could also use a Rice Krispie mixture if you prefer. So I just used all my off cuts, mixed it with a little bit of ganache until I had this moldable dough. I rolled out two big sausage shapes and I'm adding that to the sides of the cake. And once they're on there, I'm just blending the top onto the board of it so it's flat and there's space for the head. To make sure they're really firmly on there, I also blended a little bit of the bottom of the arm into the body as well. So now I'm going to give both arms a crumb coat and then pop that back in the fridge until it's nice and solid. For the head, I baked off two six inch half ball pans and then one six inch round and I just cut that in half and I'm only using one layer. I'm adding one of my half ball cakes and just threading that through the center of my dowel. I also trimmed off a little bit of the top of the dome so it would sit flatter against my cake board. I added a layer of ganache followed by my six inch layer and then the other half ball cake. Once the head was stacked on there, I put this in the fridge to chill until it was really firm and then I'm going to start adding some definition to the face. I want the front of his face to be a little less round so I'm taking away some cake there and I also just took a little bit off the top. I'm getting rid of most of the caramelization and I'm just going for like an oval shape that's flipped on its side. When I was all done, this was the shape I had and I'm adding a crumb coat to that as well. 
To help me define the face a little bit more, I'm using my cake pop mixture to add more of a pointed chin and then just a little bit on either side on the bottom of his face as well. Just making sure that I blend all the edges so there aren't any like chunky seams. When it was done, it looked like this. I put that in the fridge to set and then added one more layer of ganache all around the cake, doing my best with my spatula to smooth it out. I also used a piece of cardstock because it can bend to the form of the cake and you're going to get a smoother finish. Because he has patchy fur, I'm going to add my fondant in patches, starting with some white on his stomach. I made sure the top of that fondant reached up all the way to underneath his chin and then I smoothed it down and cut away around the arms and just down the side using my X-Acto knife. I added some white fondant around the arms as well and when I placed the pieces down I made sure when I cut away the fondant I left it so that it was overlapping a little bit on the tummy. You don't want to cut it so that the seams meet because if you apply any pressure at any point, the ganache is going to poke through. I cut away the excess at the top and then I have this great little clay modeling tool. It's like a soft tip and I'm going to be using this to help blend my edges. Strap in because you're going to be seeing me doing this a lot. I'm using this tool to add the fur texture. You can see I've already done the tummy and the other arm. And then I'm going around the arm and over that seam and just trying to blend it together so it's not noticeable. It can take a little bit of time. At first you might think that it's never going to blend in, but it will eventually. It just depends on how much time you want to put into it. I'm just making sure to define where the arm meets the body and then also around the bottom of the arm. Just I don't want to lose the shape, I don't want it to be like one big white blob. I added another piece of white to the back again just making sure that the seam went all the way up to where the head meets the body and when I cut away the excess I made sure it overlapped just a little bit. For the tops of his arms, I added two pieces of brown fondant and then just added my fur texture, blending it down into the white. I extended that onto the tummy just a teens, just a little bit so you can see it poking out on either side. Starting on the face, I've added two ovals of white fondant. Ignore my weird drawing on there. I was just mapping out where I wanted everything to go. I know it looks brutal. He's going to be looking off to the side. So I have a lighter brown fondant. I just used a piping tip to cut out a circle and I'm adding that into the corner of each eye. In the middle of that, using a smaller piping tip, I cut out a black circle for the pupil. With some straight up black food coloring on the end of a fine tip paintbrush, I'm lining around the outside of his eye and then I'm going to drag that color in towards the middle, not quite right to the black. I redefined that really dark edge once I was done and then I moved on to the other eye. For his eyelids, I have some really light brown fondant that I've rolled into these long snakies and I'm just framing the top and the bottom, making sure those tapered ends meet. To make his mouth, I'm starting off with a ball of that same light brown fondant and I'm just mushing that down against my work surface especially pressing the edges down so it's more of a dome. With my fingers, I'm just pulling the fondant out into these four points. Hopefully, just from watching me, you'll get a better idea of what I'm trying to do here. I added that to the cake and then with my fondant tool, I'm adding two nostrils into the top and just shaping out his nose a little bit. Now I'm going to etch out his cute little smirk.
And then right in the middle, I drew another line underneath and blended it out so it made it look like he had a bit of a lip. Just like his body, I'm going to add the fondant in pieces, starting with brown for half of his face. I'm putting that right over the eye and the mouth. And then once I have the fondant smoothed down, I'm just going to cut the eye out. I gently peeled away that excess and then just reshaped it, making sure that that dark brown comes right on to that light brown. I used a reference picture just to get the idea of what I was going for, so I will link that one below. It was really helpful for me, and it's probably gonna be really helpful for you too. I'm making sure that brown comes all the way down and I'm cutting it so that it goes a little bit onto the arm. Again, I don't want any of the seams to be meeting. I want all the seams to overlap just a little bit so that none of that ganache is gonna poke through when I blend everything in. While my fondant is still soft, I wanna start adding in that fur texture, just making it a little fluffier, we'll say, around the eye area. I know my cake looks a little bit gooey, it's just because I had it in the fridge for a smidge too long, so when I took it out, there was some condensation. It will dry down to be matte again. If that happens to you, just don't touch it. And then I went around and just added the rest of my pieces, alternating between white and brown, just based on the picture. Once the head was all covered, I wanted to start on the hands. So for each finger, I'm taking more of that light brown fondant, just rolling out a sausage shape and then cutting it down to the right size. And with my little sculpty tool, I'm marking in a fingernail and just a couple lines for texture. Gizmo has six fingers, so three on each hand. I'm adding those to the end of my arm shape and just blending the top up. With a strip of white fondant, I'm overlapping the flat part of the fingers and then just wrapping it around the sides of the arm. And then with my little blendy tool, I'm bringing that onto the fingers just a smidge and then blending it up into the arm. So this is what he looks like all covered in fondant and with his hands. Some of the seams in the back are a little bit rough, but if you wanna take your time and really go over them, you absolutely can blend it out so it all looks seamless. Now I'm going to start on his legs and feet with a ball of that light brown fondant. I'm rolling that out and then shaping it into kind of like this peanut type shape. I use my pinky to indent a little bit over halfway down just so it makes it look like more of the bottom of a foot and then added three toes. I'm using more of my cake pop mixture to shape the leg and I've already got this like really chubby fat cylinder shape going on. I'm sticking the foot right on the front of that. If you need a little more oomph to hold it in place, you can add a little bit of ganache. I draped some white fondant over the leg and then just brushed it down the back. And with my fondant tool, I'm adding some texture right away and just kind of fraying the edges so it looks like fur going onto the toes. I place that right against the body and then using my fondant tool, I'm dragging the white up onto the tummy just so it looks cohesive. To make his ears, I have more of some light brown fondant that I've rolled out, a little bit on the thicker side, not too thin, and I made myself a template of his ear just based off of the picture I saw. I will link it below. I'm sure if you blew it up big enough, you could trace it to get more of an accurate shape. I just eyeballed this. I cut it out with my X-Acto knife, and then once I peeled away the excess, I marked in a line just at the top with my fondant tool, and then using my finger, I'm going to blend it out so it creates a bit of a ridge. I added more lines down the front just to add some texture. 
And then to set this up to dry, I placed it against a little piece of balled up saran wrap, just so it kind of has a bit of a curl. I put that aside to dry completely. You can add some Tylos powder if you need it to firm up quickly. And then once it was good to go, I flipped it over and I'm using a thicker dowel for this because these are gonna be a little bit heavier and I wanna make sure they're really secure in the cake. I placed that dowel on the back that I've already brushed with a little bit of edible glue. And then with another piece of that light brown fondant, I'm laying it over the top and just smoothing it down so that dowel is really snug. I let that dry completely before I added it to my cake and then I just pushed it in on either side. I added a piece of brown that was tapered at the end so it was thinner towards where his face was and then I just textured that so that it blended onto his head and also frayed out towards his ear. Now for some final details, I'm taking more of that brown food coloring and I'm lining his eyes. So if you do your makeup, it's like tight lining. I have some brown color dust on a fluffy brush and I'm just placing that into each of his nostrils and also the line of his mouth. With a fluffier brush, I'm adding some brown just underneath the ridge of his ear. It's pretty concentrated because that's where a shadow would be. And then I'm just lightly dusting over the whole ear itself, but you just wanna make sure it's a little bit darker in that one area. With more of that brown, I'm going over the eyelids and the mouth and the fingers and the feet, just giving everything a general dusting and concentrating the color a little bit darker wherever you know a shadow would fall. And this was the final result guys. I just threw some coconut on the board and here he is. Gizmo is obviously the favorite gremlin besides Greta, the glamorous girl gremlin who I also wanted to make, but Gizmo won out because he's really adorable. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a like, a comment, a share. It really helps me out. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.